Hello everyone, this is Yasser from VPro. Today we're going to be talking about how to read and write a SIM2K250 ECU that's typically used on Kia Optimas um, and, and other vehicles as well uh, using the flex tool. As you can see here, this is a suitcase with all the flex tool and accessories that come across. Today we're going to be talking about reading the ECU through boot mode. And what that involves is basically opening up the casing for the ECU. And in this case, it's fairly easy. You have eight tabs that needs to be pretty much pushed over or bent over. Once you get that going, there is going to be typically most ECUs silicon around. So you can use a heat gun around the perimeter here and then wedging it out carefully to make sure that you do not hit any components in there. And through practice, you'll get better at this and we'll come up with more videos as to you know, best practices to do this and best tools to use but we have one that's open here and the problem with this ECU which is a common failure with these is misfire to the vehicle so what we end up doing here is reading the information from the used module which encompasses VIN and security information and everything else mapping and writing it into a used module saving the customer uh, a lot of money because buying a brand new one of these ECUs are pretty expensive. So with that, we do have some pins already loaded. I'm gonna show you on the screen here. We open up the Flex software and up in the search box, all you put in is SIM2K250 just as shown in on the ECU. And right here you can see Kia Optima 2016. Um, even though this was a 2017 Optima, but the fact that it's the same ECU is compatible. And so when you come here, it gives you more information about the engine, the protocol. Again, as long as the ECU has the right label, you should be fine. And here you can actually read the transmission control unit and the ECU. In our case, we have the ECU and the only connection type available is the um, boot. So, this is where you open up the case and connect some pins onto the board itself. So first off, as you can see here, we've already set up some of the pins that was um, that's shown here on the screen. So in my case, I had to pretty much align it this way so that it matches what I have on my bench here. And then by using the pins that come with the flex as well you got to select the right pins or connectors depending on the, the pin size on the ecu and so by selecting that putting it in and then selecting the lines going into the io box based on what's shown on the screen here so for example this one pin here shows it goes to port a5 and that's the pin right here going into port a5. So similarly you do with the rest of the pins as shown on the connector manual here and because this is boot mode you know you're going to have to use what's called and preferable to use this because it's going to make your life much easier and simpler and faster with less headache is this is called the Mac bench. It's pretty much used to connect onto the board for boot mode and it comes with these probes that is spring-loaded and uh, they work fairly well. So let me show you how it works here. So as you can see here, PCB manual, um, it's showing there's three connection points that needs to be made. One here is B7. And you can see on the board itself, it's uh, right there. And on the pad there, you can actually see through hole pin, which I'm gonna probe into instead of the pad itself. So even though the PCB manual is showing the pad, I can see that that's connected to the through pin hole. And so the best practice to do this is you can actually unscrew this and then move this over. Depending on the height, you adjust it accordingly. So in my case, I know this height is good enough. And then I select the appropriate hole that would allow me to pin that point there. And as I push down, I lock it into place 
through screwing it into the hole here and there we go. And I'll have it connected into that pin. Back to the screen here, we got V9 connected. And so again, select the right hole that would line up to that pad. Spring load it down and then lock it into place through the hole here. There we go. And of course, each one of these, just as a reminder, so this should be seven. So for example, the first pin connects to here and then on the other side is where we select the line that goes to B7. So fairly easy. Similarly with the second point, I'm gonna show you a third point right here. So as you can see on the screen, again, I'll line it accordingly. Find the right through hole. Go in. And then lock it. Once it's locked, that's going to be eight. So from the probe, I go to one of the connectors here. And then I select the line from there and then go from the other side into B8. And so that goes right here. So now that I have all the pins from the ECU pin connected accordingly as well as from the PCB into the IO box, the next thing to do here is try and connect through, and hopefully we have a connection into the ECU. And as you can see here on the screen, it actually connected with no issues and it allows us to read a full backup of the ECU, which is where what we would do in our case in order to be able to write the full backup into a used ECU. And it's gonna be reading the EEPROM and the flash of this microcontroller here. And again, here it shows you the voltage that the ECU is running at and the current that it's actually consuming to, to run at. And in some cases, if there's an internal short in the ECU, you might not be able to read the ECU and you can see the amperage spike up and then flex would disconnect from it for safety or for protection purposes. But you can see on the IO box here, all the lights that are on show that there's a good connection into the ECU. And here we're reading the different sectors of the ECU and this is the flash. So first we're reading the internal flash of the ECU. Now this comes in handy for when needing to do jobs without the need of, you know, buying subscription from manufacturers. Because a lot of times, you know, you gotta have manufacturer tools as well as subscription costs, which goes through the roof as you add them all up. Whereas the Flex works on various manufacturers. As a matter of fact, what Flex helps in is pretty much reading the information from the microcontroller and processors. So as long as they have it cracked for the different ECUs and for the, for the different processors, you're able to read the information and then write it into another ECU, whether it's brand new or used. So as you can see here, it uh, read everything out. <clears throat> they read the EEPROM, it was only 64 kilobyte or 128 kilobyte, so got it. And uh, yeah, we save it. And here we go. As you can see here, it's saved. And whenever you want to write it, you would uh, pretty much connect the use module onto the bench. And then you select, uh, of course, you got to disconnect from this ECU, put in the use module, reconnect everything, connect into the used ECU or brand new, and then select write full backup. And you got to select the file and then load the file in. And then once you press send, it will write the information into the used module. And there you have module that will work plug and play into the vehicle without the need of even 
looking at the vehicle. And that's the beauty of, these, of this tool is it allows you to do work on the bench without the need to have the vehicle on site. And so if this is something of interest for you, if you are learning from this, please subscribe, like the video, share the video, more videos to come. If you're interested in buying the tools, connect with us. Our website, www.vpro.ca. There is some more information coming along. We're planning on doing classes as well, in-hand classes. And through your feedback, we'll know what else would be helpful for you. And until next time, thank you.